Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Valsa Williams with the news at 9. The headlines Lok Sabha passes demand for grants authorizing expenditure of about 45 lakh crore rupees for financial year 2023-24 by voice vote amid din Prime Minister Narendra Modi to address One World TB Summit at Varanasi in Uttar Pradesh tomorrow also to dedicate and lay foundation stone of various projects worth more than 1780 crore rupees Union Home Minister Amit Shah to chair the regional conference on drug trafficking and national security in Bengaluru tomorrow. Agriculture Minister Narendra Singh Tomar launches digi claim for disbursal of claims by farmers through National Crop Insurance Portal. In sports, India clinches both men's and women's titles of Asian Kho-Kho Championship at Tamulpur in Assam. and India win a silver and a bronze medal in International Shooting Sport Federation World Cup Championship at Bhopal in Madhya Pradesh. The Lok Sabha today passed demand for grants authorizing expenditure of about 45 lakh crore rupees for financial year 2023-24 by voice vote amid din. When the house met at 6 in the evening, Speaker Om Birla applied for the guillotine after which the outstanding demands for grants were put to voice vote and passed. The house passed a demand for grants and appropriation bill 2023 authorizing the government to withdraw funds from the consolidated fund of India for its working as well as implementation of programs and schemes for the fiscal beginning the 1st of April. The appropriation bill was introduced by finance minister Nirmala Sitaraman. The bill was later approved by voice vote after rejecting cut motions moved by opposition members. After that the house was adjourned for the day. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi's remarks on Indian democracy and the Adani group issue continued to disrupt the parliament proceedings consecutively for the eighth day today. Lok Sabha was adjourned twice before the house met this evening. Rajya Sabha after the first adjournment met at 2 p.m. However, the scene was no different in the upper house. Treasury bench and opposition members were cancelled and hearing on their demands which led to adjournment of the house for the day. Sports Minister Anurag Singh Thakur has said his ministry, National Sports Federation (NSF) and Sports Authority of India (SAI) are working in close coordination to train Indian sports persons for the forthcoming Asian Games scheduled to be held in September October this year and next year's Paris Olympics. In a written reply in the Rajya Sabha today Mr Thakur said the government is providing all requisite support and facilities to the athletes to enable them to do their best in the forthcoming Asian Games and 2024 Olympics. Agriculture Minister Narendra Singh Tomar today launched digi claim under the ambit of Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bima Yojana for claim disbursal through National Crop Insurance Portal with the launch of a digi claim module insurance claims of over 1260 crore rupees have been disbursed today to insured farmers of six states the states are Rajasthan Uttar Pradesh Himachal Pradesh Chhattisgarh Uttarakhand and Haryana Speaking on the occasion Mr Tomar said 132000 crore rupees claim amount has been disbursed till date to the insured farmers Prime Minister Narendra Modi will address One World TB Summit at Varanasi in Uttar Pradesh tomorrow. During his one-day visit to his parliamentary constituency, Mr Modi will also dedicate and lay the foundation stone of various projects worth more than 1780 crore rupees on the occasion. The Prime Minister will also lay the foundation stone of the passenger ropeway from Varanasi Kant station to Godaulia. This will be a unique facility for the pilgrims. A report India will be the third country in the world and Varanasi the first city after Bolivia and Mexico where the ropeway will be used for public transport the cost of the project is estimated to be around rupees 645 crores the ropeway system will be 3.75 kilometers in length the ropeway will start from Varanasi Kant station and there will be five stations including Kant railway station Kashi Vidyapeet Rath Yatra Church and Godaulia Sushil Chandra Tiwari AIR News Varanasi Union Home Minister Amit Shah will chair the regional conference on drug trafficking and national security in Bengaluru tomorrow. During the meeting, due emphasis will be laid on aspects like ways to curtail drug trafficking through maritime routes 
and stringent punitive action on drug traffickers, resulting in zero tolerance. Mr. Shah will also oversee the destruction of 9,298 kilogram of seized drugs, valued at 1,235 crore rupees. Representatives from five southern states and three union territories will also be attending the conference. Union Road Transport and Highways Minister Nitin Gadkari today inaugurated and laid the foundation stone of 31 road projects worth 13,200 crore rupees during his one-day visit to Jharkhand. Varanasi Rachi Economic Corridor, Double Decker Elevated Corridor Road Project in Jamshedpur and Bukharo Jainamur Gola Ormanchi Expressway were the few important road links under these schemes. The Defence Ministry today signed two separate contracts with Bharat Electronics Limited at a total cost of over 3,700 crore rupees to enhance the operational capabilities of the Indian Air Force. The first contract worth over 2,800 crore rupees pertains to the supply of medium power radars Arudra for the Indian Air Force. The Chief Economic Advisor Vyanantana Gesharan has underlined the need to counter global challenges through global cooperation. Delivering the keynote address at an event of G20 at IIT Madras this evening, he highlighted some of the issues like strengthening multilateral development banks to enable them to address both new transboundary challenges and existing development challenges. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates, round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. All India Radio is presenting a vignette of select quotes of the Prime Minister Narendra Modi from Man Ki Baat as the program completes its 100th episode in April this year. Today, in the 18th episode, let's listen to the excerpts of Man Ki Baat through which the Prime Minister shared his feelings and appealed to the people to make India a much sought-after tourist destination. People, voice and direct dialogue. That's your and our Man Ki Baat. Yes, this is how our Prime Minister connects with millions of countrymen. With the program Man Ki Baat, aired on the last Sunday of every month on All India Radio. This series, which started on October 3rd, 2014, will complete its 100th episode in April 2023. Be it nature's beauty or our rich cultural legacy, our country is replete with diversities. There are places of worship and faith, ancient palaces and monuments, amazing cultural masterpieces of arts and crafts which should be thronged by the tourists from all over the world. But it is France that holds the record of attracting the highest number of tourists from the world over. Be it national or international tourists, they all contribute to the growth of our economy. And perhaps it was for this reason that the Prime Minister, in the Man Ki Baat episode broadcast on 27th March 2016, stressed on the need to promote tourism in the country. Tourism के द्वारा बहुत रोजगार के संभावना है। विश्व की तुलना में भारत टूरिज्म में भी बहुत पीछे है। लेकिन हम समासों करोड़ देशवासी हम तय करें कि हमें अपने टूरिज्म को बल देना है, तो हम दुनिया को आकर्षित कर सकते हैं। विश्व के टूरिज्म के बहुत बड़े हिस्से को हम हमारी ओर आकर्षित कर सकते हैं और हमारे देश के करोड़ों करोड़ों नौजवानों को नए रोजगार के अवसर उपलब्ध करा सकते हैं A Surat court in Gujarat today convicted Congress leader Rahul Gandhi in connection with a 2019 criminal defamation case filed against him over his Modi surname remarks the court also announced a two-year jail term as quantum of punishment to him. Chief Judicial Magistrate H.H. H. Verma, however, granted bail to Mr. Gandhi and suspended the sentence for 30 days to allow him to appeal in a higher court. BJP MLA Purnesh Modi had filed the case against the Congress leader for his alleged remarks. Rahul Gandhi made the remarks while addressing a rally at Kolar in Karnataka ahead of the 2019 Lok Sabha elections. As a result of the judgment, Rahul Gandhi might lose his membership as an MP and Wayanad parliamentary constituency may witness a bipole. Reacting to the court order, Raksha Mantri Rajnath Singh said Congress leader Rahul Gandhi should take today's Surat court judgment on a defamation case as a lesson that words hurt more than weapons. Talking to a media agency, Mr. Singh said everyone should learn from this incident not to cross the line while speaking in public.
राहुल जी को इस सच्चाई को स्वीकार करना चाहिए कि शब्दों की चोट शस्त्रों की चोट से ज्यादा गहरी और पीड़ादायी होती है और शब्द जो अनर्गल और झूठे हों तब तो चोट और गहरी और कष्टदायी हो जाती है इसलिए हमारी कानूनी व्यवस्था में अनर्गल बेतुके आरोप लगाने वालों पर सजा का सीधा प्राविधान है और मुझे विश्वास है इस न्यायिक आदेश से सीख लेते हुए हम सभी को यह सुनिश्चित करना चाहिए कि सार्वजनिक जीवन में शब्दों की मर्यादा किसी भी सूरत में टूटने न पाए The National Investigation Agency NIA today carried out searches and raids at the residences of eight suspects in the Ghazwai Hind case of July 2022. The search operation spread across three states included four locations in Maharashtra's Nagpur. According to an official press release, NIA has found incriminating materials including digital devices like mobile phones and memory cards and documents that have been seized. Last year the NIA arrested a Pakistani national Marghoob Ahmed Danish who had created Ghazwai Hind groups on different social media platforms the members of this group were being radicalized with the aim to convert them into sleeper cells for carrying out terrorist activities the a charge sheet has already been filed in this case even as further investigations continue JNK Director General of Police Dilbagh Singh said today if more journalists are found indulging in militancy or sympathizing with terrorists they will not be spared and action will be taken as per the law he said the border security grid is also tightened and some police posts are also raised in border areas the DGP said Pakistan is trying to smuggle drugs and ammunition into this side of the border DGP Dilbagh Singh was talking to media persons on the sidelines of the police martyrs memorial T20 cricket चैंपियनशिप फाइनल मैच हेल्ड एट स्पोर्ट्स स्टेडियम कठुआ जम्मू कश्मीर पुलिस की आतंक के अलावा जो दूसरी बड़ी चुनौती है वो अभी जो नशा की बढ़ती हुई तस्करी और नशे की बढ़ती हुई लत जो नौजवानों के बीच में फैलाई जा रही है वो है और कुछ एक केस जिसमें वेपन और ड्रग्स की दोनों की तस्करी पाकिस्तान की तरफ से इस तरफ आती है उनमें बड़ी सख्त कार्रवाई की गई है कुछ एक ऐसे केसेस भी हैं जो हमारी अपनी एस स्टेट इन्वेस्टिगेशन एजेंसी और एन नेशनल इन्वेस्टिगेशन एजेंसी को दिए गए हैं कुछ केसेज ऐसे भी हैं जो हम नेशनल जो जो एन है उनके जरिए उनके साथ मिलकर In Mizoram, Assam Rifles and Customs personnel have recovered a huge cache of contraband drugs worth over 390 crore rupees. According to the Assam Rifles, the operation was jointly carried out by the Sir Chief Battalion of 23 Sector Assam Rifles and the Customs Department yesterday at Ruangklang in Champai district. In the operation, they recovered 39 lakh tablets of illegal triprolidine uh, HCL and pseudoephedrine HCL tablets from the possession of a suspected man. Host India clinched both men's and women's titles at the Asian Kho-Kho Championship held at Tamulpur in Assam. In the women's category, Indian Eves defeated Nepal by an inning and 33 points. On the other hand, the men's team too continued its brilliant form and defeated Nepal by an inning and 6 points. India remained unbeaten in both categories throughout the tournament. A total of 9 countries participated in the event. India won a silver and a bronze while China retained its top spot by winning two gold medals on the second day of the International Shooting Sport Federation World Cup Championship at Bhopal in Madhya Pradesh. The finals of the 10 meter air rifle men's and women's categories will be held on Friday. In boxing, star pugilist Nikhat Zareen, Lovlina Borgohai and Neetu Gangas have entered the finals. In the women's world boxing championships being held in New Delhi assuring India of three silver medals at least Nikhat overpowered Colombia's Ingrid Valencia to reach the final of the 50 kg category earlier Neetu Gangas also advanced to the final after beating Kazakhstan's Alua Balkibekova after a split decision and now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again Lok Sabha passes demand for grants authorizing expenditure of about 45 lakh crore rupees for financial year 2023-24 by voice vote amid din Prime Minister Narendra Modi to address One World TV Summit at Varanasi in Uttar Pradesh tomorrow also to dedicate and lay foundation stone of various projects worth more than 1780 crore rupees Union Home Minister Amit Shah to chair the regional conference on drug trafficking and national security in Bengaluru tomorrow Agriculture Minister Narendra Singh Tomar launches digi claim for disbursal of claims by farmers through National Crop Insurance Portal in sports in the clinches both men's and women's titles of Asian Kho Kho Championship at Tamulpur in Assam that is all in the news at 9 good night <laughs>